Welcome, marvelous makers and art appreciators to the Art Space Podcast, brought to you by Lemon Street Gallery and Art Space, located at 4601 Sheridan Road. Stop on in to your favorite citrus-themed art gallery. I am saying this like a robot today. Do it. <laughs> Do <laughs> it. <laughs> and I am your host, Shelby Nesmith. And I am Jay Coy. And today we are with the fabulous filmmakers and um, film producers, we'll say, uh, Jeanette and Dave Haight from Port of Fear Film Festival. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. This is our first foray into film, so to speak. Yes. I think, oh, right? We had... Um, oh, uh, love your the... community media. They do some video mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, we've had a little touch. So a little um, bit. Yes. Touch. This is a mm -hmm. deep dive yeah. Yes, film. film. Yeah. <laughs> get ready, folks. Yeah. Grab your popcorn. Get, yeah. your, get your snacks. Sour Patch Kids. Yes. Yes. Oh. Sour Patch Kids. Red Vines. Yeah. 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 Raisinets. Yep. Junior Mints. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 we're going really no. weird with the Extra candy butter. now. <laughs> Extra butter. Extra butter always. On the Junior Mints. <laughs> yeah, <Ooh>. delicious. <laughs> yeah, too far, too far. No. Yeah, no. But Junior Mints was too far? Yeah, that is, it is too it's far. Like you're it's toothpaste. almost like to the snow cap level, and we are going to judge you for the sound it makes in the theater and that you're eating that. I yes. like snow caps, too. I do yeah, like snow okay. caps. Ah. I'll take that. Junior Mints makes me think of Seinfeld. Anybody um, I, yeah. I'm the old guy that references. <laughs> I just feel like when I eat junior mints, I'm just eating toothpaste. It's so minty. I have to follow this thought because I started it. I'm going to be real quick, but Do I it. think the Seinfeld <laughs> thing was they were watching like an operation, like in a medical, like a medical operation and Kramer like brought in like snacks because of course, mm -hmm. and he's like standing above them, popping junior mints and accidentally drops one into the body that they have opened up. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's and right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Something like that. Right. Yep. And then it was all, Oh no, what a wacky thing to happen. Anyway. Wow. Now we're done. The show about nothing you yes see. yes because <laughs> some, somebody at home was going he's got to follow it <laughs> yeah you follow it buddy <laughs> i followed it it's done let's move on yes film <laughs> yes <laughs> but yes we hope you have your snacks with you today and um we're ready to talk about all things filmmaking and things that are creepy and spooky yeah. so Heck yeah getting, yeah getting ready for that um mm -hmm. that's the other thing yeah it's the spooky film festival yeah so yes. um getting ready for fall so getting you in that right mood oh i love fall so, yes fall is my favorite time of the yes. year we we're well aware shelby yes. is a fall personified i'm a fall girly <laughs> and i could live die breathe halloween so yes what are you going to do about it? <laughs> I'm going to celebrate it because I love fall too. Oh, well, awesome. <laughs> I'll lay claim to winter. I like winter. Yes. You're, I always say it, you're the big polar bear. I'm winter man. Mm -hmm. but either way. Um, so <laughs> moving right along, we're going to just check in with you guys before we get into these questions. How are you guys doing today? Pretty great. We're pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Yeah, we busy bees. Very, very, very busy bees. Very today, busy yes. bees. Um, <laughs> lots of upcoming announcements coming for the film festival, and we're super excited for this year. Last year was our first year, and we had it in the summer, thinking, "Well, we know Kenosha, and Kenosha is totally a summer town." And then we realized <laughs> Kenosha is totally a summer town, but we want to lean into spooky season this year, and so we're gonna go into. Uh, fall and we're gonna hit it hard and be kind of like the launch into spooky season with the film festival this year we Sounds had, perfect we had to lean into fall because last year mm -hmm. we competed with taste of wisconsin oh, oh. which right there uh, was like well the we car show that. Oh. the dj <laughs> festival oh yeah, yeah and there was a couple others like multiple others that same weekend oh. and we're like wow that's that's the worst weekend we could have yeah. possibly chosen. And that oh, was no. supposed to be the last ever taste of Wisconsin. Yeah, that was it a lie. They came that back was a lie. With, they came back and they came back strong, <laughs> yeah. which is awesome because yeah, we have a lot of really, really good like food vendors down here. So it's oh, it's yeah. awesome to, to highlight them. But we're taking yeah. the fall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We moved it. There's like one other event this year and it's plenty far away we're Good. very happy with the weekend we chose so you guys Good. are going to be september 29th through october 1st yep. port of fear film festival at the kemper center yeah kemper center for the 30th and october 1st and then at backyard dream productions 
on, on the 29th for the first day for the Beckard. first for the first day. opening night and opening that's at night. the orpheum theater on sixth avenue Ooh, no unfortunately oh, not herzing it's, it's at herzing, herzing. It's at herzing. Yeah. Yeah. they had multiple locations they do yeah. have multiple locations which is awesome but yeah no the um backyard dreams productions that we're gonna be having our first day at will be in herzing um it is gonna be um a limited um ticket amount just because um of venue space but it's gonna be really cool we we have a pretty cool lineup for for that night so we're hoping for a very very good turnout so that people can mm -hmm. see a film that we really liked mm -hmm. that we can showcase yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it's exciting we're gonna be touching on this throughout the podcast but mm -hmm. We'll launch in with our first question. Yeah, Let's definitely. do it. Let's go wild. So what got you guys into film slash art, and what are some of your earliest film slash art memories? Mm -hmm. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess of the two of us, I'm, I'm the filmmaker. Yeah. Um, definitely. Easily. Yeah, there's, there's no question there. There's no question there. <laughs> um, I would say, like, I don't know what really got me into like the the wanting to be a filmmaker but mm -hmm. it definitely clicked with me about 16 years old where like that's what i wanted to do um in fact i was going to be a professional wrestler until i was 40 <laughs> years old and then i was going to be a world famous filmmaker into my retirement years there are that pictures was my goal. as evidence too I, I did give pro wrestling a try <laughs> maybe um, you could flip-flop it and I, I could go for the senior could, but, wrestling you know wwe just doesn't hire older guys anymore Ugh, i don't what a know travesty. what it is i know you have to be like 25 i will say <laughs> at one of the film festivals we've gone to there was another filmmaker there and dave was talking to the filmmaker about wrestling and he was so funny because like questioning him about like oh do you really know what like, what do you know about wrestling? And then he was like, whoa, you actually know about wrestling. What was your move? And at the film <laughs> festival, in the middle of the lobby of a hotel at a film festival, David and this guy reenacted what David's move was going to be. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was really, uh, it was a sight. There were a lot of drinks. Yeah. There were a lot of drinks. Most of them were that free. At, so, uh, you know. There were... That was at Austin Revolution, which is, shout out to Austin Revolution. They were a great film festival. As they were well. a great film Highly festival. recommend going Hope that there. We can go back again. Yes. Is that Steve Austin's uh, film festival? <laughs> yeah. Ironically, no. Oh my God. <laughs> I love that. Because no. that would be stone cold. Cool. If they could that would be him. stone cold. <laughs> Just stone cold. That was lame, but I loved it. <laughs> Love it. I made my one wrestling reference. <laughs> what movie are you watching? <laughs> but yeah, no, you wanted to be a wrestler and then And then I decided that filmmaking of... after trying the wrestling was probably the better route. So, you know, I, I went to Parkside and um helped to be one of the students that rounded out their their film studies program and they mm -hmm. ended up starting a film studies program. The year before I left, so I really couldn't participate in it, but I was I, happy to I be did. a part of it. And there it was you go. Fun. There yes. you go. I so got my certificate. Yeah. Yay. So I was one of the students that helped to like get the energy behind it to uh -huh. make that happen. Um, I ended up with a certificate, like you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I, uh, I, I just say I minored in film theory, essentially, you know, because mm -hmm. I took honestly probably more film classes than I did English classes, and I have an English degree. Mm -hmm. um and after that i just started making some short films and then in 2018 we had the opportunity to make a feature length uh documentary called behind the bucket mm -hmm. and that's about star wars costumers uh, going around to you know charity events make a wish foundation events um going off to you know, Star Wars celebration and following them there and watching them, you know, dress up in their costumes. And then all of a sudden they're going off to a uh, gold star event, which gold star events are basically, you know, events that benefit the people who are the surviving members of families from the fallen officers of the Chicago police department. Okay. So randomly, literally day of, you know, get asked to go in there and we get to film them and, um, I'm normally an editor by trade, so you know I get to piece all of that together. So it was really interesting. We did a, uh, not a premiere of our movie. Mm -hmm. Basically, we did a, an early screening of the mm -hmm. most like ninety percent finished product for uh, members of that organization. And the really funny thing was, is that I was saying hello, so and so, hello, so and so, and they're really confused that I know their name. 
And at the end of the movie, you know, we go up there for a Q&A and I grab the microphone and I say, well, just so you guys know, I know all of you much more intimately than you think. And everybody, you can, you can oh, feel the tension in the air, you know, growing. They're like, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm the editor. I've watched all of you guys say <laughs> every single thing you said to the camera a hundred times through. A <laughs> hundred times through. And then all of a sudden they were like, oh, <laughs> that's a lot less unsettling. That explains it. Yeah. So, you know, then we come up to, uh, you know, the film festival and... You know, there's a lot of movies that I've been like assistant director on, uh, ones that I've been like an associate producer on, and a couple, you know, that I've been editor on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's they all randomly fell into the horror or thriller or fantasy genres. You know, it was by no design, um, just kind of happened. And, you know, we've gone to, there was one uh, short film that I made that was called Love Me Tinder, which was a horror movie. It went to probably, 20 festivals mm -hmm. one and awarded a bunch of them uh the first movie that we ever had that went overseas you know for our little group that you know was accepted to a, a uk film festival and you know we kind of were like mm, we make a lot of horror films like we should showcase these at you know parkside you know in 2022 <laughs> yeah. just for giggles you know it was going to be right after christmas and we were just gonna have fun with it mm -hmm. and then Jen comes into the picture, and like, I'm going to let whoa, her tell whoa, whoa. this part, because this, this was all her doing. Oh. <laughs> Always blame the wife. I was about to say, that side eye. That's fine. <laughs> blame the wife. <laughs> oh, you want me to I want you it? to tell it, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that's like how David got into film, but then if your next question was going to be, but how did you get into doing a film festival? This is kind of how this all fell into our lap. Gotcha. <laughs> is... Uh, so Dave has a really like close core group of, of filmmakers who are local filmmakers in the area. And some of them have just like done such amazing work first and foremost, like where like most of them have been up for distribution, like feature films, which are so hard to make, like a, just a feature film in general, especially since Wisconsin, you, you don't really get like tax incentives for doing anything for film. There's no funding. There's, There's no, no funding. Mm -hmm. There's no grants. So so to do a film in Wisconsin, I think, is an extra challenge in itself because you don't you don't have those incentives. Right. So I think the filmmakers who are doing film, especially a feature length film here, I mean. They have a passion, they have a drive and they have a grit to want to do it here, first and foremost. But so it was like this whole group and they wanted to do a um, like a. A, a film thing. <laughs> um like a showcase and yeah we're gonna we're gonna do it on like a friday night or something and i was like okay like, it was well, cheap it was cheap yeah. yeah and i said well are you gonna have snacks and he was like no <laughs> and i said you want people to come out on a friday night you're not gonna have snacks <laughs> come on i was like come on now thank you yeah. come on <laughs> and i said well is there gonna be a bar and he's like no and i said <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> like two. <laughs> I'm just saying you have to make it an event, right? Mm -hmm. So we kind of started talking about like, okay, like, well, let's 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 think like, how could he do something for the filmmakers and really show off the filmmakers, but also kind of get maybe the public who hear like it's an independent film because I think there is also a stigma against like independent film, like you mm -hmm. know, it's 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 really well produced but you know you have to get people out who are going to actually take interest in that so we're like thinking and thinking and thinking tossing some ideas around and then it just started getting bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger <laughs> and then we're like okay i guess it's a whole whole film festival <laughs> you know with with our own you know Bigger, much bigger venue than we anticipated with being at Kemper Center. And then we're like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to get the community involved and have like a market and have like vendors come out with like food and maybe like artists. And now we have a whole spooky market that we're running and we're trying to just include as many people from the community as we can to to get that interest in, you know, local artists, local filmmakers and local businesses. I mean, it really is a film festival 
you know, by people from this community, for people in this community, and for people from not from this community to come to our community and see all the benefits that we have to offer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So oh, nice. Yeah. So that's how I got into filmmaking. <laughs> that's how we got into filmmaking. And that's how we got into being a film festival. Gotcha. <laughs> right. Gotcha. Well, I'm glad you kind of stumbled into, into that. Into that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and being at that core of support and show, showing what this community has to offer, mm-hmm. I think is just so important and so valuable because um, that's like the real story behind supporting the arts is that that level of effect and you're trying to showcase that as much as possible. So it's really, really awesome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yay. Yay. You guys do the same thing. Oh, <laughs> you definitely do the same thing. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, but the lovely story, we're going to go on to the next question here. Um, who or what um, was an influence on your film um, slash art style? Oh. Ooh. Uh, or like who was an influence for starting a film festival oh yeah that too sure yeah. so All there's there's actually deeper question or deeper answers for that mm-hmm. um i guess for my style um of like editing and stuff like that at least what mm-hmm. i prefer to do um i really take inspiration from like, a lot of spielberg films okay you know um i made a short film called the damned thing and the way that i kind of wanted it to work out was to be like a jaws on land mm. like mm. that was my big plan um did not do that uh (laughs) but you know that just filmmaking in spielberg himself would say this that every single film set you're on you're going to learn something brand new it'd be something no matter how many times you've done it no matter your decades you've been in the business you will figure out something brand new that you've never learned Mm -hmm. every single day there's so many different components to how film works it's for me the all-encompassing art form you take in digital art, you take in traditional art forms, you take in music, you take in carpentry, you take in acting, you take in oh boy. Uh, cinematography <laughs> and photography. You take, there's so many different components, writing, you mm-hmm. know, and the film is written, you know, dozens of times by people who aren't even writers. You know, it's rewritten by producers, rewritten by directors, rewritten by the editor. Mm -hmm. Who's me? (laughs) I rewrite the movie every single time. They might put something down on paper. That's not necessarily what they're going to get. And I don't anticipate ever giving it to them. Mm -hmm. Uh, But when you look at like Spielberg's work, you know, if you took, you actually look at Jaws, you know, there are so many things that you don't realize on even like your 10th viewing of that movie that occur. Like, for example, uh, there's a part where uh, Chief Brody is being pulled uh, aside by the the mayor. Mm -hmm. Larry Vaughn. On the ferry. (laughs) And you don't realize that shot is unbroken the entire time. There are no cuts. cuts. Yeah. Because they've they've mapped it out where you have no reason to cut. The Uh performances are very strong. The camera work Mm -hmm. is doing the storytelling for you. So there's no reason to cut. There's no reason for the editor to do any work. And they do that several times throughout the film. But the film, you would say, is a fairly fast-paced, moving film. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the actual breakdown of it, it's actually pretty slow. Yeah, The editing is incredibly slow. But it's definitely, I would say, the first modern thriller, blockbuster. You know, it it designed the whole genre of, you know... Mm -hmm breaking box office records Mm -hmm. so when it comes down to um like the inspiration for for me to actually like make movies it's guys like him it's guys Mm -hmm. like uh denny villanueve who you know is doing uh arrival all the dune movies Mm -hmm. um you know blade runner 2049 um those are guys that i really look to for like the artistic style editing you know, preferences and stuff like that. Quentin Tarantino is really fun. Uh, Jean-Luc Godard is, he's fun. I learn a lot from him. Um, I don't care for his movies necessarily, but uh, there's a lot to extract yeah. from from his work. Especially uh, just honing in on that editing too. It's oh yeah. Just, you might not like the director or anything, the mm-hmm. storytelling, but you could still walk away from editing and see something cool there. So yeah. Well, yeah. Even, even when you break it down even further, mm-hmm. let's break it down more. <laughs> um, Orson Welles is from Kenosha yep. mm-hmm. and he's probably the, the most famous director in the film world. Like 
you throw him and Spielberg up, you're going to say Orson Welles is more famous. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, he's from Kenosha, and he actually was the person who kind of pushed film forward a decade with a single film with Citizen Kane. Mm -hmm. You know, editing, cinematography, it was all people experimented. But you saw that for maybe one shot in the entire movie. That's, mm -hmm. that's where their experiments came, not mm -hmm. the right. entire film. And now that one experimental film is the the blueprint for how modern films are made yeah. mm -hmm. in their entirety. Um, so yeah, that's where I get a lot of my inspiration from. I would say from for the film festivals, you know, we take a lot of inspiration from Twisted Dreams up in Milwaukee, run by Chris Kai House. Um, he runs a fantastic film festival. He's been doing it. For, this is going to be their eighth year. They're wow. two weeks after us this year. Um. Nice been doing a great job i got to play one of my films there um in 2019 it was 2019 year before covid um, um <laughs> and he's been doing a great job at building that film festival ever since um fantasia is another big one it's out in montreal it's one of the bigger genre film festivals which is what we are uh, you know horror sci-fi fantasy and thriller mm -hmm. And, you know, they expanded out to, you know, just weird film and general experimental and, you know, action. So, like, they get a lot of kung fu movies and stuff like that. So, that's another one where we take a lot of inspiration from. It's like, they're doing something right. They bring in about 110,000 people a year. So, we say, okay, cool. So, whatever your model is, you know, we should probably be paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. And there's other film festivals, too. There's uh, Fansporia down in uh, Brazil. There's um, Film Quest, which I think is in... Idaho? No, I no, Utah. I think it's in Utah. <laughs> Sorry, it's like it's not the Midwest. It's past the. Rocks. There's mountains. I would there. say though, any festival that we've kind of been to, because even just festivals we've gone to, not as a film festival ourselves, but just like as people have gotten into a film festival, like this, this last year, like we got into Smod Castle Film Festival out in New Jersey, um, which is um, hosted by Kevin Smith. Oh. And um, Austin Revolution Film Festival, we also went to this last year. Which um, is a top 50 film festival. Right. Oh. It's just, you know, every every festival kind of has, like, different, like, kind of focuses. And I think it's really good to to go there and see what they bring and to kind of see, like, how that reaction is. And, you know, I will say, like, with Austin Revolution, they had a huge... Um, focus on the filmmakers and making sure the filmmakers felt welcomed and and everything like that and it was a really cool vibe and it was like well i want our filmmakers to feel like that like i want the people coming in from out of town to feel like that welcome like the southern hospitality mm -hmm. was absolutely there um so yeah i think it's just like you know you, you kind of take inspiration from like all little pieces of life and it's just kind of like you want to like treat everybody how you'd want to be treated, whether you're a filmmaker, whether you're a, ven a vendor coming in, or if you're even just like a, a patron, like you, you want to feel welcome, you want to feel appreciated that you're taking your time out of your day to be there. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a good time for an educate Jake. Okay. Go. I'm going to get real dumb here. So <laughs> no. like, what, what is a film festival? It's like, is it a contest? Like, Kinda. So Kinda. okay, depends yeah. on the film festival. But like you're going there and watching movies, <laughs> yes. right? So okay. you can go into like what a film festival is, and I can explain how ours might be a little bit different. We're kind of weird. Sure. <laughs> so, <sighs> so like I've heard of Can. <laughs> yeah. So, so Can is <laughs> massive. It, it, we are not that big. <laughs> can is, yeah, is ridiculously dun, dun, dun. large. Yeah. Um, so the way that like the bigger the biggest film festivals really operate is they will have their judges watch a ton of film. So basic, let me start over. Actually. Okay, <laughs> they will have screeners. So they'll have people who screen films and say that these films are worthy of the judges to really watch and try to take in whether or not we're going to take those movies. Which shout out to our screeners, shout out to our Amy, screeners. Cisco, and Sarah, and mm -hmm. us because without screeners, like there's no freaking. Yeah, we had, we, had, we had hundreds of submissions this year. We needed screeners. Officially. We needed help. And these are all new movies that are like in the process of coming out, usually, usually. or have recently yeah, come I, out. I would say so. We have a few that are that are older, 
you know, maybe going back as far as 2017. Okay. They're very okay. few and far between. Mm -hmm. And they have one movie from 2014, which we've actually specifically selected for the film festival okay. because it's a local filmmaker. Um, and we're featuring them this year, which is something that our festival does. So they screen out of competition. So they're not necessarily gotcha. included in that. Mm -hmm. the, the filmmaker's also a judge. So that would yeah. be very self-serving. <laughs> <Right. laughs> uh, but generally, you have these judges watch these films and they come from a variety of backgrounds generally speaking so that you can have a, a good you know a good perspective coming in from different angles and you know you hope that you have a couple people who get angry and you know make arguments for why a film isn't you know as good as others are saying or why it is as good as others are saying mm -hmm. and then depending on what category they fall in those films will be nominated for best feature or best short right if you're at the Cannes film festival uh, the palm d'or i think it's okay. like the big award like that's the Ooh. that's <laughs> the one but most festivals will have like individual awards like more than one not just you're the best you win yeah it's like so last year we had i think five or six awards we had like uh -huh. best local short film best feature best short film best international short film and, and audience choice awards Got we it. had five. Oh, nice um and they're, you know, for a lot of the smaller film festivals, like, uh, and I don't believe has an audience choice. I don't okay. think they necessarily care. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they, they, they I think they're so big, they don't care. They they, everyone else's opinion does not matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the six minute standing ovation for the whale. Yeah. That's, that's the audience choice award. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when it comes down to the smaller festival, you know, that's a good way to get audiences, you know, kind of engaged and yeah. in, in interacting with us in a way that makes them feel like my presence here was not just for me, but it was for these filmmakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how it works. And then you, you have that competition aspect where, you know, there are certain people who win, certain people are nominated and certain people who are just official selections. And I'm going to be really honest. Uh, we had probably 75% of our movies, you know, our filmmakers or our, uh, our panel of judges, you know, feel like this is an award-winning movie. This, this one deserves a nomination at the very least. Good 75% of our movies. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they all have to convene and have a conversation about who's going to actually win. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. The competition is there, yeah. you know, gotcha. and, and I can't tell you how we have judges from a variety of backgrounds. We have a lot okay. of local people. We have studio executives. We have actors. We have directors. We have writers. Uh, we have uh, professors mm -hmm. who not in Kenosha, mm -hmm. um, you know, who've written for, you know, national film magazines. We have a local filmmaker who's been making movies for 30 years, who's person who's being featured this year uh, jason paul column i'll just drop it yeah. jason paul column <laughs> tell me on a friday who cares? Yeah. yeah the judges have been announced he yeah, is aware the judges been announced. so yeah. jason paul column is our, is our featured uh mm -hmm. he's worked with hundreds of uh b-movie um actors and actresses so he's he's well versed in b-movie horror mm -hmm. uh which is incredible he's made two documentaries about it he's made his own four or five feature length films as far as i'm aware he actually has a new book out starting this week nice which we're very excited for him um, he sold out at the uh a convention this last week so Woohoo. good for him uh but we've also got people from blumhouse which is mm -hmm. the biggest horror studio in the united states they released the exorcist mm -hmm. oh back in the 70s they released the exorcist so they, they are the quintessential horror house mm -hmm. of of film you know and we've also got cinematographers and everyone everyone is included in nice. our in our deal and our judging panel uh so there's a lot of different perspectives and when you have that many different perspectives you know you have people who say this movie no nah, not nah, brah mm -hmm. and then you have other people who are like no dude you're wrong you're, you're just totally seeing wrong. it wrong you're seeing you're, it wrong you're, yeah you, you don't understand do you it a once over come on so. i will say the judges feedback has been wild it has been oh. wild <laughs> it's been I'm like, it's been the strangest thing i'm like okay so when they do their meeting i want to be <laughs> like they're just the they're all passionate you know and they all it's just like everybody they're all they coming all from different different angles. backgrounds and angles and it's like huh we're like you we like that <laughs> and we, you've like, gotten eh. some decisions that like we're, we're like judges. no 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 this this movie is gonna destroy this this thing's gonna take everything mm -hmm. and then like no i like this one <laughs> <laughs> wow really i mean i liked that one too but 
that was I'm out of left field. field. That was mm. We had a lot of out of left fields. I was Ooh, neck rolling. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> but yeah, to to come back to your question, yeah. So a film festival, it's it's it is usually though you you know you as 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 a viewer you're gonna you know pay for your your ticket and you're gonna go in you're gonna see a block of film whether you're seeing just a feature you might see a bunch of shorts all together it really depends on the on the film block you're going for which we've divided them up pretty well i think between yeah we've divided features, them features and, and every combos and... every block that you see you're gonna have something that's got an award nomination because it, it is you know for all intents and purposes a competition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we try not to focus on that part. You know, we have, that's the, the closing spirit. ceremonies are, you know, the awards, right? Yeah. You, you hand out, it's cool to get a little trophy if you're, if mm -hmm. you're an award winner, you, you, you get mm -hmm. recognized for doing really well mm -hmm. in a medium that's everyone's in, but maybe not doing really well. in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it helps to set you apart. Um, I don't like to focus on the competition aspect because I know how incredibly hard it is to make any film and to do it well. Mm -hmm. And when I say it's hard, I mean, it's hard. It's the most collaborative art form you can imagine. There are no more hands in any, any of the paintings in this gallery. <laughs> I, I guarantee you, even including the frames, mm -hmm. there were probably at most three hands to make this work you have mm. the canvas you have the frame if actually if we include the, the paint the paint brushes and the, the paint, yeah, paint brushes we, we might get up to like yeah. 10 people yeah. or entities right mm -hmm. film even on a short film mm. you, a you have that many people for something that's that's not got a big budget you know mm -hmm. we're talking 100 bucks you got about 10 people on that sucker easily 10 people for a hundred dollar movie mm -hmm. now imagine one of our movies is close to a million dollars. Imagine how many people <laughs> had to be on that movie to make it look the way it does, to make it flow the way it does, to make it sound the way it does. Mm -hmm. So when it comes down to the competition aspect, we, although it is a competition, I, I think that's not the way to really look at it. Everyone deserves to be recognized for their, their work in film. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you've been selected, that's your recognition. Mm -hmm. That says there are people that I don't know, I'm not associated with, who want to show this movie to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, that's the biggest compliment you can pay is, hey, I saw this really cool thing on YouTube. You should watch it. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of our deal, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, we saw this thing on Film Freeway. You should definitely watch this. It's going to blow you away. Mm hmm takes a lot to recommend something like that and because you're kind of putting yourself on the line too by saying here oh, yeah. watch this thing oh, that yeah. i thought was cool <laughs> and he's like oh. well especially when you get those judges back to you and they're like mm, i don't like this but then you get the one person who's like no i totally see why you want this movie i i can see it yeah. i can yeah. i agree well and i <laughs> you know? think too with with our film festival you know we do definitely horror but we also are horror sci-fi fantasy and thriller and i think one of the uh, learning opportunities that we had this year is for, for next year is we, we do want to promote more of those other genres as well. Um, Cause while we are the port of fear, it, it still is kind of going into sci-fi fantasy and thriller. And I would love to see more movies that explore that mm -hmm. as well. So but yeah, for film festivaling, like that's, we answer your question. Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. A very long question. I was like, I feel like we. I have this thing called ADD. I want to just. I, sure, I definitely. I want to make sure our circle didn't go into like a squoval or something, yeah, and we're gonna go, go, go wear yeah, oval. Wear oval. Oh. I saw um, one in my yard earlier. They had an acorn. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, and like, you know, usually with the film festivals, though, it is, is about the films. We're a little bit unique where we do run a spooky market with it as well. And um, kind of like I mentioned earlier, we're trying to get some some local artists and vendors and food trucks out there, too. And, uh, you know, if you know, if you know the Midwest, you know that it is not a festival without food and, oh, and yeah. beer. Yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to lean into and that as well. Curds. That is also going to yeah. be Oktoberfest season. So it yeah. is. Oh, and I know. do know we're that. Aware. And I know <laughs> that that same weekend, I know that um, like Rustic Road Brewing is doing their Oktoberfest as well downtown. So, I mean, if anything, it's a really good opportunity for people to come down and 
come to our festival if they want to go to their festival like it's gonna be mm-hmm. a fun event but there's not gonna be too many events so you can have like festival hey, you could you do want both. To. Absolutely. absolutely not too many you can do both <laughs> exactly <That's right. laughs> it's not too many so that's that's the good thing yeah awesome <laughs> all right all righty so we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back with some more questions Hello, Art Space podcast fans. This is Joseph from Draw Joseph Studio. Most of you know who I am. I have this fabulous world class draw studio up in Racine at the Racine Business Center, 1405. 16th street my studio is real easy to find it's on the first floor on the east side right inside the tunnel if you know the racine business center it's a big tall brick building and there's a big von schrader on the east side of the building and the tunnels right underneath the von so come in the tunnel first studio to your right and on every tuesday afternoon at 5 30 the gates open up and at 6 p.m i have a model posing you're invited it's free tip the model hope to see you there and we are back thanks for sticking with us folks hi hi hello hi hello hello (laughs) we're just chit chatting on break and we had a very fun discussion over break which we can dovetail right into yes Mm -hmm. uh i was telling them that i don't like horror movies (laughs) (laughs) i love them so i well okay so i I, d- I always say I don't like horror movies, mm-hmm. but there's some, I love some like uh, you guys, you guys are aficionados of the horror genre. So you probably will know some of these, but like one of my favorite movies is the lighthouse. Okay. Oh, yeah. And that's like one of those where it's like, yeah, it's kind of horror, but it's not really horror, but it's kind of, it's pretty it horror. I mean, I think it it's is. not, not horror. I, I, yeah. I think the undertones are definitely 100% there. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And when I tell people like my favorite show uh, my favorite like TV show, I'll always say uh, season one of True Detective on Ooh. HBO. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Specifically season one. And mm-hmm. it's like about a serial so killer. Good. Were there other seasons? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> sure. Wink, like, wink. I've somehow <laughs> forgotten about them. Yeah, I think Vince oh Vaughn was involved and oh, uh, Mahershala Ali. Oh, the other yeah, yeah. But um, But yeah, so those are like horror adjacent. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. So I like, I like the stuff that's scary but i don't know i don't like jump scare you don't like the blood and guts type of stuff well that doesn't even really bother me i don't okay I don't take like, yeah, just, no, 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 I don't like saw. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say, I'll stop you there. No but like, I, I'll, I'll watch like a serial killer documentary, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. You and... know what I think you like? Okay, so horror is so. Uh, I, I, it's such a broad genre, it's right? So you can do mm-hmm. horror comedy like Zombieland. You can do like, oh, like Zombieland. blood and guts and gore and body horror. You can do true crime horror it's all horrific when you think about it and honestly i feel like you lean into people are scarier than monsters oh yeah, yeah people yeah. are the monsters yeah dun 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 100 which 100 percent. the scariest thing is the human mind absolutely <laughs> like humans are way scarier than a monster like give me freddy any day over because we human. make up these <laughs> monsters yeah we do so. and like and that's the scariest is when it's like you know joe schmo next door and he's like cutting up people and you're like what I just saw I hit the grocery store buying milk. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no, I feel like uh, yeah, everyone's got their own their own horror genre that they like, and you know I've heard a lot of people who are coming to our film festival, and some of them are like really good friends of ours, and they're like, I hate scary movies. I'm like <laughs> I got you. Don't worry. How do you feel about like funny cannibals? <laughs> like you know, and they're like watching. They're like, okay, I survived. I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> But, and like David was talking about Jaws earlier, yeah. and it was so hard for me not to jump in because I love Jaws. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, a and that's a movie. kind of a scary movie. It is a scary like, movie. Like it traumatized so many kids it when did. it came out. It scared so many people from going into the ocean. Yeah. Like, and that's a legitimate, I mean, it's you a know, legit thing. Never yeah. never <laughs> and uh, Shelby will attest. I think it was two episodes ago. I went on a big thing about how I love Jaws and I watch it every year on the Fourth of yeah, July. You do. Oh, same. Oh my yeah. God, that's our tradition too. Stop it. Now it's a Fourth of July movie. It, it is, is a Fourth of July we watch it movie. Other times of the year too, but yeah. it, it's prerequisite. But it is. It has to be on Fourth of July. We watch it every yeah. year. It's yeah. in the morning though, so you have the rest of your day. That's a good one. Yeah. It's a great way. And to then you watch day. the hot dog contest. Uh, 
But eagle-eared listeners will will remember that in the first half when you were talking about Jaws, I knew the name of the mayor from Jaws, Larry, oh, yeah. Larry Vaughn. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And he has the coolest blazer with uh, anchors emblazoned mm-hmm. on it. That fairy scene you mentioned, he's wearing the blazer. So that's why nobody noticed it, because he's got a really cool blazer. <laughs> Go back and watch Jaws <laughs> and tell me I'm wrong. Distraction. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> the mayor in uh, How Did the Chance of Meatballs based off of him. No. Really? Yeah. Go wow. back and watch his face. His face is the almost oh. copy and paste. Wow, wow! The way he dresses, the way he reacts to the, you know the emergency is also on point. A, fa- <laughs> a favorite comedian of mine, who's also a podcast host, famous guy in Hollywood or whatever, but he has like all these bits about Jaws and how the real the real hero of Jaws is the, the mayor. Shark. Oh, the mayor. <laughs> Because he's trying to save summer. It's, you know, <laughs> this is going to ruin everything, but we got to, you got to, you know, he's the hero, uh-huh. really. You know, he's tr- trying to shut, oh. stop the beaches from getting shut down so everybody can enjoy their summer. Oh, I thought it was the shark because no. we're messing with their home. No, it was Larry Vaughn. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was Larry Vaughn. And his anchor still warming and stuff. I was trying to get yeah. in that, you know. Like, but either way. Anyways, uh, so, did we want to go back into questions? Oh, we got so <laughs> many questions left. <laughs> Where do we go? <laughs> well, our next question, um, yes. <laughs> who are some of your favorite filmmakers? And uh, I feel like you guys kind of discussed a lot Probably. of them already. Mm-hmm. But were there yeah. any others that you'd like to mention? Local filmmakers, filmmakers uh, in general? Local filmmakers, I'd love to. Um, we have uh, Danny Villanueva Jr., who is mm-hmm. um, a director and writer. Um, he did I Dream of a Psycho Pomp, which... Um, I think debuted in 2021. Maybe it was 2020. At the end of 2020. It might have been, but I think 2021 is. I think it was 2020. It was no, it was 2021. It was 2021. It was 20... Yeah. Yeah. Recently. Yeah, it was 2021. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> the whole like 2020 um, year 2020 it's, it's, 2022 oh, yeah. was it's very blurry, blurry for us. Yeah. <laughs> it's very murky. Um. But he does a really great job at capturing, you know, the art behind horror. And, you know, uh, I would almost say that I Dream of the Psycho Pomp, which is really a story about death and how you not overcome it, but how you deal with it. Um, I don't even know if it's necessarily hard in the genre of horror. So it might be something that you would like. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's more of a drama that just has supernatural elements to it. Nothing that's overtly like, oh my god, that's, ooh, I gotta walk out of the theater stuff. It's, you know, very cerebral, very heartfelt. Um, so I, I really appreciate that we have filmmakers in the area who can take directions like that and and execute in a way that does elicit those kinds of responses and emotions. Uh, we have uh, Tony Ramos from uh, Racine, who's in the process of making. Uh, a feature-length film called Charlie Apocalypto that we're really hoping will come out in the next year or so. Um, zombie comedy. You oh, know, nice. So we're really excited about that. Um, we have about maybe three, 30%, 30 to 40% of the movie like finished so far. And we've, mm-hmm. we've put a fair bit of it together and it's, it's funny. <laughs> awesome. Um, it's, it has no right to be that funny. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, you know, there's uh, Mike Detterman, who's uh, been directing a bunch of feature-length movies lately um, from a variety of genres. Um, he has one that's uh, just recently um, wrapped production, uh, and that one is called, uh, my goodness, what? Uh, Through the Eyes of Grace. Um, so we're excited to see that. It's a faith-based movie, but it has a lot of thriller elements that, like I was saying earlier, a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of the local filmmakers just kind of gravitate towards that genre. You know, mm-hmm. there's no rhyme or reason. You know, he got picked up for a faith based film, and it sounds like it's going to be a faith based thriller. thriller. You know, yeah. um, uh, Ben Ernt, who is um, out in Burlington, he uh, is just finished his first draft of um, a movie. Uh, it's, a, it's a drama, and that one, goodness, I, my brain is starting to not work on the names here. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> oh, if he listens to this, he's going to be so <laughs> <He's> just <laughs> screaming at the screen. 
<laughs> dreaming at this. Um, yeah. Oh, I can see the poster in my head. <laughs> oh, oh, it's going to frustrate me. Um, we'll come back to that. Yeah. I'll, I'll remember <laughs> it before we leave. Okay. Um, and then uh, BJ Raniac, who's also one of our uh, judges. He's made a bunch of movies um, over the last few years. He made The Rocket, um, and he also uh, directed the uh, really solid thriller uh, Blame uh, that premiered in, again, in 2021. All of these movies were premiering in 2021. Mm -hmm. And he sold out four theaters oh, wow. locally, mm -hmm. you know, a Cineplex. It was a four really rooms. Deal. He just kept yeah. selling out the rooms. And I'm like, Aww. would you like to open up another one? So it's really... Really cool. Um, awesome. And there's a bunch of other filmmakers, too. And if I'm forgetting someone who I'm close with, I'm sorry. You can yell at me later. Yeah. Um, it's a long list. <laughs> but, you know, the really cool thing about our area. The Nightingale. The Nightingale. There we go. Thank you. I'm Woo. so sorry. Appreciate it. Nightingale, Benner. And yeah. Sorry, uh, Ben. Tony Ramos actually wrote that movie. So that's really cool, too. Oh, sorry, um, Tony. <laughs> but, you know, there's there's so much... From this area that is of a higher quality than you would really think would come out of you, you know, you mm -hmm. think of Kenosha, you think of southeastern Wisconsin. If you're not in Milwaukee, if you're not in Chicago, you think mm -hmm. everything in between is going to be shot on an iPhone, mm -hmm. shaky, Just horrible does, acting, yeah. no mm -hmm. cinematography. There's no skill behind it. That's your that's your perception. Mm -hmm. That's and not the case at all. These guys mm -hmm. have blown it out of the water and said, hey, you might want to reconsider that because that's that's not what's happening here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to the point where every single time we we make a film and we get to screen it for people who, you know, we've been talking about these movies for sometimes years. And they're like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 sure, 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 sure. Second they watch it. And your your dad was actually a, a big, like he he knew that like we were doing it, we were serious about it. Mm -hmm. But until he saw the documentary, he was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Literally at the after party, fifteen minutes after the documentary was over, he was like, "I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I I see what you're trying to do, and mm -hmm. you you got very very close. Like well, I can only imagine if you have money." And I'm like. Yeah, so, you know, if you know anybody. <laughs> I think it just comes down to that perception of of what independent film is. And I think what a lot of people's, you know, perceived notions are of that versus, like, what people are actually able to put out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, the, the films that are, if you come to the film festival, you'll even see it yourself. But... <laughs> um, they are really high quality and the amount of work and planning that gets put into them. And also just knowing that the people that are making them are really good people and they're just trying to live out their dream and, and do what they love, which I think is brave because there's so many people that give up on their dreams with, if, with the, like the slightest like showing of like mm -hmm. pushback or anything. So it, it really is worth, worth watching and, well, maybe a good comparison would be like you, the average person would go to a craft fair or an art fair or a yeah. local art gallery mm -hmm. and buy a piece from a local artist, mm -hmm. but then they're going to only go watch Marvel movies. Like, that's, why, right. that's exactly it. Why can't you support a local filmmaker yep. just like you would support a local artist? Well, and know? like the biggest thing that we, we tend to hear, and this isn't even just from people our age group, but like what I hear from like, so all my siblings are in like, they're very like early twenties. So they're all slightly young. <laughs> um, but you know, they'll, they all kind of sit there like, Oh, this has been done. This has been done. When they talk about going to the movies and it's like, oh, it's just like remake, 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 sequel. remake, remake yeah. sequel, sequel, sequel. And I'm like, you know, like there's really amazing ideas that are coming out from people who just aren't able to get that, that big production company funding, but their ideas are phenomenal where you're like, how did you even come up with that? It's the same thing like you were just saying, like, if you go to, you know, a, a, a small independent gallery like Lemon Street, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to see artwork that you're not seeing somewhere else. Like it's it's independent thinking and it's really creative. Mm -hmm. And 
I think we all want that. Yeah, you're not <laughs> only going to look at the Mona Lisa or Starry Night. Like, <laughs> yeah. why would you only go see Star Wars movies and, right. you know, big blockbusters? No. Absolutely. Support local. Support local. <laughs> Broaden your horizons. Yeah, and you're going to enjoy it more. And mm -hmm. the person making it's going to enjoy it. And, like, mm -hmm. it makes you so proud of your community. Like, thinking, you know, my biggest pet peeve is people saying that we're in Kenowa and I'm like dude if, if you yeah. really think you're in Kenowa then you're not you're seeing, making it that you're making For it real. that and yeah. you're not opening up and experiencing everything there is to experience here mm -hmm. yeah here. I, that was like my one I hate that term even yeah. being here and just like oh this is a fabulous gallery in Kenowa it's like no we're in kenosha we're part of kenosha part it's fabulous of look yeah. at it don't call it that please yes it is a huge pet peeve because yeah. it's just like there's so much potential well so the, yeah. the funnier thing uh that got us earlier this year we were out in madison mm -hmm. um for uh the live performance of you know oh dance. i know what you're talking about and there was a speaker who came out and was doing like a, a live reading Kind of a deal before one of the performances and he said kenosha so you know our ears picked our up ears we're like what are we about up to get? We said oh boy <laughs> and he didn't say kenosha but you know it was the implied you know maybe 1980s to 1990s mentality of what this place was mm -hmm. you know kenosha was a manufacturing town you know mm -hmm. there i think are still as many bars as there are churches mm -hmm. you know it's you can walk from your bar, go, your you know, do your <laughs> church thing and then go and back, go back to, to a different, different bar. bar and you can do it almost every day without revisiting the same bar yeah. uh, and church from what I understand. <laughs> yes. So, <Church>. you know, <laughs> it was really interesting getting his perspective on it because that's not our perspective. Right? No, you know, we're coming all. in 20 years removed, you know, minimum uh, from what he experienced and the town is flipped. Mm -hmm. You know, you definitely still have those instances where people are beyond blue collar, you know, and, you mm -hmm. know, their entertainment is going out to their local dive. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. and and nothing that's wrong with that. There's nothing, yeah, there's wrong, nothing with that. wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. If that's your deal, that's your deal. I think Enjoy it's, it. But it's that's more not... the implication that Kenosha hasn't changed and it has. Well, and then oh. that's mm -hmm. all that there is. Mm -hmm. You know, we have... If I'm not mistaken, the Harbor Market and Kenosha Market are among the largest uh, farmers markets in the in the state. I think second largest after Madison. Yeah, yeah. and Madison's massive. Oh yeah, but I think if you combine the two markets, we're coming close to competing with oh, them. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how many nights a week do we have live music down here? Mm -hmm. You know, you have two art galleries that are literally next door to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and then a pencilarium and, down the road. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, there, like, and alpaca art. Yeah. And, 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 Anderson Art Center. You can keep going. We have an art district. 30 minutes, yes. you know. We have an arts district. Yeah. You know, so. th there's so much here. And I think the thing that makes me go back is that he mentioned horror movies. And that's all you could do in oh. Kenosha is watch horror movies uh. and, and go to your bar. And I'm like, mm, why do you have to call us out like that? <laughs> um, but, you know, there's so much more to offer here than really you can see at the surface level mm -hmm. you know we have restaurants we have a beautiful lakefront i mm -hmm. think we probably have the the best looking lakefront outside of private property that you can find you know mm -hmm. in wisconsin um and all you have to do is just get off your couch and go look at it yeah. Yeah. you know <laughs> I, I really do find you know the people who make those comments the ones that make them to me at the very least mm -hmm. They're not leaving their home. And if they're leaving their mm -hmm. home, they're going to a grocery store that they don't like where they're paying way too much for what they're getting. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to restaurants that are chains mm -hmm. and they're getting the same experience with the same person who isn't invested. You know, we have lots of restaurants where like the wait staff and the cooks are very invested because that's that only restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not 250 others within, you know, 60 miles, mm -hmm. you know. I think if your perception of Kenosha is so very limited, it's because you've limited yourself to what you can see. Mm -hmm. Open your eyes. You, you can't go anywhere without finding an event. Jake yeah. knows. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, and I always try and challenge those people that say that of just like, it's different. Mm -hmm. 
like because um just going out into illinois and even those areas we're just like oh yeah i've visited there before and blah 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 um it's just like we'll revisit because it's completely different now. yeah <laughs> so absolutely. yeah last 10 years alone there's been so much done Mm-hmm. You know, the only thing that we're missing is a movie theater. So, <laughs> just got the one. Just got the one movie theater, and it, it does happen to be a chain. Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. yes, yes. But uh, maybe, maybe we'll work on that. Maybe one of our questions mm-hmm. uh, coming up will will be a dream project. Or... Oh, <laughs> oh. Can we skip to that? Yeah, one? go to that one more. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. That could be a podcast by itself. We're gonna skip ahead here. We're gonna go. Okay. If time and money are no object, oh. what's your dream project? Let's go. Yeah. Uncharted, the oh HBO God. series. Okay. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one. <laughs> dream or, projects or goals yeah, for the so, festival. Oh, oh, okay. okay. So so I will say so probably one of our biggest goals for to come from the festivals we would love to keep this running as long as we can and increase mm-hmm. it and make it bigger and bigger and bigger because. Why not? Um, the more the merrier. The more the merrier. <laughs> I think, you know, one of our biggest goals is to kind of utilize our festival, though, too, to kind of pass, you know, legislature to be able to make filming here have, you know, tax incentives and tax write offs mm-hmm. because that would actually really, really help our community, too. Because if you have film crews coming here to make films, that's not only going to boost up the area saying, hey, someone's like making a film out here, but you're going to get so much more business in our local hotels, bars, restaurants. You're going to have people from the area being able to be maybe be um, on set who maybe wouldn't have those opportunities otherwise. Um, So that's like one one big thing that we would love to get are some tax incentives to have people be able to film here and um, that's that's a great promotion for local artists and local businesses alike. Mm-hmm. Um, another another project we would love to expand on is we do something called the Five Minute Horrors, and we work with um, local high schools in the area, um, and we we ask students who are interested if they want to go and spend a weekend for forty eight hours to make their own short film up to five minutes. Um, and it can be horror, sci-fi, fantasy, or thriller. And that's actually what's going to be kicking off our event on Saturday is that block of student films. We're not looking for anything fancy, but it's an opportunity for them to play around with um, teamwork. It's an opportunity for them to be creative and come up with a story. And it's an, a way for them to have to organize themselves and have to work within time constraints, time limits, and and learn um you know those features of filmmaking so for the last two years we've ran that that program um the um awesome staff at waterfront warehouse have been our sponsors for that event for the last two years um and so we do a kickoff event with them and um we have local um, filmmakers from the area that'll come out as well and kind of be like their mentors and these kids can can ask questions and get you know advice and feedback um before they start that that weekend um excursion (laughs) into the unknown (laughs) you know we're always on standby too in case they have questions and like some of these kids are like so brilliant i'm like holy moly like you're like 16 and 17 you're coming up with this like we had one team that the entire team got COVID, and we're like oh they're probably gonna have to drop out they did it all over zoom and it was great (laughs) and we're like geez i wouldn't have thought of that like oh my god this is so good but we would really love to expand on that because you know unfortunately the first thing to go is arts funding, especially in the mm-hmm. school system. Right. And, you know, if there is an opportunity that we can have to use, you know, our our festival to give back to to kids in the community who want to go into this, like we're absolutely going to try to do it. So we really want to try to get teachers with KUSD interested for this year because we would love to do um, this year a fall semester and spring semester program with with students um, and just kind of get more kids that opportunity to work with local filmmakers and make their own their own films. So that's a really big deal for us too. Um, 
But yeah. Well, awesome. That sounds good. Yeah. Very community centered. Very. Love that. Yes. Her yeah. additions were much nicer than mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, one of the cool things we do at the Five Minute Horror is that we also bring in local filmmakers who do filmmaking professionally. Okay. You know, I have long lists on IMDb that have their names attached to tons of movies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for our kickoff event, they get to talk to those students and students talk back and you know, have a conversation about how to strategize, you know, what they should be doing. Uh, how can they make their movie look as good as possible with the time and resources that they have? Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's really great. Being able to say, you know, you should really grab an Ari and you should have, you know, this this lens that goes from 20 millimeters to 150 millimeters. You know, you should really have that and you should have, you know, $150,000 worth of lights. Mm -mm. <laughs> but you're like, well, I got a weekend and my budget's like 20 bucks. Yeah. You know, I got an iPhone. And mm -hmm. then they're like, cool. So instead of doing it this way, turn your iPhone that this way. way. <laughs> and it becomes very cinematic. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, and you can also download this app, mm -hmm. which is free. And it'll make your lens do certain things that otherwise it wouldn't, or at least give the perception that it's doing those things. Oh, nice. So you can make stuff look like an actual movie. And then, you know, if you're trying to, like, make a monster, you know, mm -hmm. if you're trying to tell your story the right way, hold off until you show that monster. Like, wait oh, yeah. until the That's last That's the money second. shot. <laughs> wait until the money shot. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, those kids, you know, for a lot of them, you know, they've watched a lot of movies. Everyone's mm -hmm. watched a ton of movies, right? Unless for you've been living under a rock, you know, you've very likely seen a ton of movies, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily know how to break them down and make them, you know, feel mm -hmm. like you want them to feel that, mm -hmm. that's, that's a skill that takes years. And these people are able to help at least push that mentality forward. Like, how do you make your audience feel kind of expedite that learning process because yeah. yeah, it does it takes just by experience. having a casual conversation yeah you know yeah. saying hey guys what are you planning to do with your movie oh, you're like well, i want to do this cool have you thought of this i did not no i didn't that is a great idea <laughs> you know so that's Aww. really the goal oh nice well hopefully we can um help you with those dreams however way shape and form that may be so um yeah let's let's get those dreams and goals achieved yeah, yes <laughs> Alrighty, so moving right along. Um, I think we're gonna just jump into our last one, do you think? Sure. Sure. Okay. We'll jump in the wrap the last one, wrap it up. Uh, we've had a lot of fun chit chatting with you guys. But, <laughs> um so our last question here is uh what are some of your thoughts about the local art community? Um, ways that we can improve it. Um, anything that we need to see. I know you mentioned talking about a um, governmental level with the tax incentives yeah. and stuff, but um, is there anything you want to see here in Kenosha or any comments or on? Or thoughts on. Yeah. I know we kind of talked about it too. About yeah, the... we've talked about this a bit already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> if you want to, just a little summary of kind of what you're looking for. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've talked so much. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it really is just bringing awareness and especially to the community of people who maybe aren't aware of of the arts and how big of a, a service they do serve to our community. Right. Um, you know, if if we didn't have all of our local artists if in every medium, we wouldn't have successes like harbor markets, like craft fairs, like the starving artist fair and racine that we just like, we would not have all of these things that make our Kenosha community so much fun. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think people need to realize that, that having that, um, Local. support yeah, yeah that local support you have to support local to have your local community prosper and thrive and and supporting places like lemon street like mm -hmm. supporting like the harbor market supporting film festivals supporting everything like that it really does snowball and the more we can do that as a community the the more we're going to have a chance at making those advances that are going to help then other businesses as well it really is a community effort and, you know, it takes a village to, to make it prosper. So <laughs> to everyone that thinks Kenosha is Kenowhere, you got to get out, <laughs> get out Absolutely. and support local. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, um, so I, I think that summarized it pretty well. Um, yeah. so we're just going to wrap up here, but, uh, where can people find you and your, uh, lovely event that's coming up? If you'd like to plug that again. <laughs> sure. Yes. So you can, 
you can find us at Kemper Center on uh, September 30th and October 1st. Mm -hmm. And you can find us at Backyard Dream uh, Video Production Studio at, on September 29th. Uh, otherwise, if you're looking to purchase tickets, you can go to, in a week. Uh, you can go <laughs> Hold to your horses. Yeah. Port, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the 15th, they'll be up. Uh, you can go to portafearff.com. Uh, where all of the program vendors and ticket uh, options will be there. Uh, you can follow us on social media, uh, Facebook, again, at Port of Fear FF, Instagram, at Port of Fear FF, on YouTube, at Port of Fear FF. FF. We're pretty consistent. We're pretty consistent. We, we found one that works across yes, the board. I was about to say brand consistency. Otherwise, you'll probably just see us walking around downtown a lot because we are down there a lot. It's a really tall guy with black hair with a, a, a blonde. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a blonde girl who you never think likes horror, but she likes horror. <laughs> Generally, the taller dude is also wearing a Port of Your T-shirt, which helps identify which helps him identify. very yeah. quickly. There will be there a nice go. picture of them on your screen if you're watching on yeah. YouTube. Or go to our socials and you'll yes, see that there. <laughs> yes, you will see them. So go find them because they're taking in the wonderfulness that is Kenosha and they are getting involved. So, um, And if there them. are any artists listening that would want to be a vendor at mm -hmm. this oh, event, yeah. there's still time for that. Yes. There is. If you want to be a 2023 vendor, we are still accepting applications. We really want to make our spooky market extra spooky. But we take anything horror, sci-fi, fantasy, thriller in theme. Give me weird as well. Like I'm mm -hmm. so here for it. Some of our films are really weird. You're witchy, or you got witchy some vibes stuff going on. We're we're happy. Nerdy vibes. Like, are you a, a Harry Potter person? Or are you a Lord of the Rings person? I'll even take the Twilighters. It's whatever. <laughs> But um, yeah, so we're us. we're taking vendor <laughs> applications till September first, and uh, that Saturday, um, September thirtieth, we are running our night market. So the vendors are going into the evening to correspond with our uh, film on the lawn at night, and then we're also doing a spooky day market on Sunday the first. Powered by mm -hmm. Taboa Energy. Powered mm -hmm. by Taboa Energy. <laughs> 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 Gotta plug the sponsor. Gotta plug the sponsor. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. That's awesome. We're really excited for you guys. And um, you'll de I'll, I'll definitely be there this year. Um, unfortunately, last year, I had, there was a lot there going on. There was a lot going on. There was a lot going on. So this year, it's in the book. It's on the schedule. So you, you guys will Yay. see me there. So, cool. yes. So I challenge all you guys listening to the pod, um, be there as well. Um, I know we talked about art buddies and stuff. So be there, be there or be square. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, and you can find us online and many places. Um, you can find the podcast wherever you get your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher is going away. Um, <laughs> Probably sorry. gone already. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye, uh, Stitcher. But um, either way, find us wherever you get your uh, podcasts, all those platforms. Um, you can find us on social media, Facebook at the Art Space Podcast, Instagram at the Art Space Pod, and our very own YouTube channel, just Art Space Podcast. You'll find us and you'll find all of our past episodes. So um, go check us out on all socials, like, review, comment, anything like that. That really helps us out, show you, shows your support and helps kind of shares it with other people. The, the algorithm is weird, but um, the more you review, the more you like the more yeah. it will spread and we want to hear from you this yes. is a two-way street <laughs> yes we love feedback here so and jake is still looking for a hater come on haters <laughs> don't you just hate me yeah. we're sitting right here <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so. <laughs> but either way so um go do that stuff and um go engage and um take in some local art so um, I think that about wraps it up for this episode. Well, we do want to thank our sponsor, oh, Joseph yes. from Draw Joseph. Oops, yes. And we want to thank, uh, would you kindly, our, who did our theme song. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank you for listening. Thank and we you, want thank to thank you. David and Jen for yes. being here. Yay. Yes, thank you, guys. Thank you. All righty. Well, now I think that about wraps it up <laughs> for this so episode. Too. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Cages the fire we need We're here to